Welcome to the uh, question one on Fundamentals of Particle Technology, Chapter 7, which is all about fluidization. And the first question at the end of Chapter 7 is the basic equation for the minimum fluidizing velocity. And the equations, the two equations that are given in the book are the cassini kalman equation, which uh, is just here. Uh, it's the uh, pressure drop due to um, flow through a porous medium. So delta P over L is the pressure gradient. Uh, arguably there should be a minus sign, but we don't need it for our purposes. Um, and then that's the viscosity of the fluid. Then we have the term, that's the viscosity of the fluid. Then we have the term that's in the square bracket, which is Cassini's version of permeability. So we have the Cassini constant, which is the big capital K there. 1 minus the voidage squared. So that's, in other words, the solid concentration squared. Times by the specific surface area per unit volume squared. That's what SV is. And then that's all divided by epsilon to the power 3, the voidage to the, to the third power. Um, and then we have this thing here, which is uh, u naught. That's the superficial velocity. So that would be the velocity of the fluid uh, that is going into the bed and coming out of the bed as well. So just below where I've drawn u naught, here is our porous media, our packed bed, and the uh, fluid flows into the bed through a distributor plate. Uh, it then flows through the particles, round the particles rather rather than through. It's through the porous medium, but round the particles, uh, and then comes out at the top here, and then that is the superficial velocity. The superficial velocity is based on taking the volume throughput, what we would say typically is Q, and dividing by uh, the total cross-sectional area. So u naught is equal to Q, which is the volume throughput, meters cubed per second, divided by the cross-sectional area, meters squared. So that's, a, that's an important distinction to make because there is a higher velocity of the fluid as it flows through the bed. That's called interstitial velocity. But we're using entirely the superficial velocity, which is the one that's relatively easy to measure. OK, so that's the pressure drop on uh, a porous medium given a certain flow rate of fluid through it. That's what the cassini kalman equation is telling us. It's basically Darcy's law with the uh, permeability section expanded to just here, what, what was in the square brackets. Um, against that, we have the weight of the bed. Now, we're going to have to be a little bit more careful how we describe the weight of the bed. It's the bed weight, okay, per unit area. Okay, so it's not just the bed weight, it's the bed weight per unit area. Uh, and if you think about it, this will be newtons per meter squared. Okay, uh, why is it going to be newtons per meter squared? Because it's got the same units as pressure drop. Okay, pascals or newtons per meter squared. That's why I mean it's the bed weight per unit area. That's what we have just here. Clearly, there's nothing stopping us from rearranging this equation for bed weight per unit area into a pressure gradient again. OK, uh, and if we were to do that, it would be 1 minus uh, the, the voidage. So that's the solids concentration, in other words, times by the density difference between the solids and the surrounding fluid. OK, rho s being solids density, rho the fluid density, uh, and of course g, it's the bed weight. So we're kind of expecting it to be uh, the, the, uh, the weight, the acceleration due to gravity to provide us with that, that weight. OK, well now we have two equations in terms of the pressure gradient. And the pressure gradient is of course in the opposite direction to the distance, which is why the minus sign might be there, but I'd say we don't we don't need it. We're just putting the values in. Um, okay, at the point of fluidization, the fluid drag through due to the flow of fluid through these this part, uh, this porous medium, the fluid drag on the particles is equal to the bed weight per unit area. 
there's no need for the bed to be supported by the distributor plate at the point of fluidization. You still need the distributor plate to distribute the fluid evenly, but there's no reaction force from the surface supporting the solids because all the bed weight per unit area is supported by the fluid drag. So that enables us to write, uh, to bring the two equations together. So we end up with, and I'll make a substitution here because the Cassini constant is typically believed to have a value of five. Not a great assumption, but it's the book value which we're going to have to work with. Um, so that's five times the one minus the voyage squared, the specific surface area per unit volume squared, all over the voidage cubed times by the superficial velocity which when we're at the minimum fluidizing velocity that is what the superficial velocity is so umf the minimum fluidizing velocity is a superficial velocity not an interstitial velocity uh, so that's what we get from uh, cassini carmen and this is of course what we get from the bed weight per unit area. So that is just a straightforward putting together of those two equations that demonstrates what happen happens uh, at the point of um, fluidization. Clearly we can uh, strike out one of those solid concentration terms, one minus uh, epsilon. Um, and then all we have to do is rearrange for the minimum fluidizing velocity. So UMF is going to be equal to, uh, we, we still have uh, epsilon to the power 3, so we need epsilon to the power 3 just here, that's the voidage cubed. We still have rho s minus rho the density difference between the solid and the fluid, we still have G. And then we need to divide by uh, five. Now one minus the voidage just on its own, not squared because we've managed to um, cancel one of those out. We still have the specific surface area per unit volume squared uh, and we still have the viscosity as well so let's not forget that. Well, very often we're interested in the fluidizing velocity as a function of particle size, particle diameter, rather than specific surface. So uh, we can make the substitution of the specific surface area per unit volume which is equal to 6 over the particle diameter that's the SOTA mean diameter normally we use SV as a um, sub it's just here but uh, I'll leave that off just to make life a bit easier to see what's going on on the screen so we can use this equation as a substitution provided we have uh, spherical particles and if we do that then umf the minimum fluidizing velocity is equal to uh, still got voidage up there still got the density difference the acceleration due to gravity however down here we have the five then we have uh, 6 squared, because we have SV squared just there, so that becomes 5 times 36. We still have our 1 minus, oops, 1 minus epsilon. Um, that was 6 over x, so we've taken the 6 and squared it and put it there, but we need to bring the x squared up to the top. Um, and then we still have the viscosity just here. So with a little bit of tidying up, we have 
the equation for the minimum fluidizing velocity is equal to the voidage cubed, the density difference, the acceleration due to gravity, the particle diameter squared, and I say that really should be the SOTA mean diameter squared, uh, then 180, 1 minus the voidage and the viscosity. And that is the minimum fluidizing velocity for spherical particles because we've used this spherical particle assumption. Okay, and that is how the minimum fluidizing velocity varies as a function of particle size. It's basically proportional to the diameter of the particles squared. Okay then, goodbye.